Alright, so the first film we're going to be having a look at is Zombie Flesh Eaters. A very well known and decent first title for them to start with. Let's have a look. Zombie Flesh Eaters, otherwise known as Zombie 2, is a 1979 Italian zombie horror film directed by Lucio Fulci. It was intended as a sequel to George Romero's Night of the Living Dead and was well known in the UK for being added to the list of video nasties. The film starts with a gunshot and what seems to be a man in a body bag being shot in the head. We then cut to New York where police come across a seemingly empty boat, only to be attacked by the film's first zombie. A reporter named Peter West, played by Ian McCulloch, is sent to investigate the ship to uncover anything the police are hiding. We also meet the daughter of the ship's owner, Anne Bowles, played by Tisa Farrow, who is concerned of her father's whereabouts. Anne and Peter run into each other on the ship at night while they are searching for anything suspicious, and after finding a note from Anne's father claiming he's sick on a Caribbean island, decide to team up. They hire a boat and a husband and wife crew called Holland Barrett, and set off for the island of Matul. We then meet a doctor and his wife, who are on Matul. We see that the Doctor's wife is going crazy and she claims the Doctor's works are unethical and that he's experimenting with voodoo. Meanwhile back on the boat, Barrett decides to do a spot of nude diving, only to run into a shark and an underwater zombie. Barrett escapes to leave the shark and zombie to tussle in a quite entertaining and incredible zombie vs shark battle. Back to Matul, and the Doctor's wife is accosted by a zombie in a very tense scene. This builds up to her having her eye gouged out on a splint of wood. This is probably the most famous scene in the film and one of my favourite gore scenes in any zombie movie. The crew land on the island and the zombie attacks start. The Doctor has to deal with patients being reanimated, while the crew deal with the dead rising in some very admirable grave rising scenes. The crew gets attacked and Barrett is killed. The rest flee to the hospital where they meet with the Doctor who explains that Anne's father was infected and turned into a zombie. The zombies attack the hospital so they burn it down in the big last action scene. They leave the hospital and Hull is attacked outside by Barrett. They kill Barrett and flee to the boat. Hull dies on the boat so they decide to lock him in the bottom of the ship to use as proof. As they sail home they learn via radio that the US has been overrun with zombies and the film ends. I really enjoy this film. I love the makeup and effects of the zombies. Even if it's slightly naff at times, I think under the right circumstances it can be really effective. I think the story starts off a little slow but by the end I'm always wanting more. I really admire the gore scenes, I love practical effects, and this film really delivers with some very memorable and gruesome sequences. The acting can be a little hammy at times, but for me it adds a charm and is what I've grown to expect from 70s horror. The soundtrack is great, done by frequent Fulci collaborator Fabio Frise. Some music cues seem a little out of place, but it overall really adds to the film. Some scenes worth mentioning are the eye scene, the dead rising, the shark vs zombie fight, and the whole final battle sequence. Fulci is great with gore, but also great at setting up shots. There are a lot of voyeuristic angles to add to the creepiness and some quite stunning shots here and there. Overall, a very enjoyable watch. Now for the release. The first thing to note is that this is released in widescreen, which I'm not too big on. It can make some details very hard to see, especially on a smaller television. The quality of the film is okay, it's serviceable. There doesn't seem to be a lot of remastering done from, say, a VHS release, but it does the job okay. The sound quality is very much the same, just okay. It can be a little tinny at times and sound slightly compressed, but it does its job. An amazing remastering it is not, but overall for the type of film it is, it works. As for cuts made, I think it may have been trimmed here and there. There is a Blu-ray release by Arrow Films which runs for 91 minutes, whereas this comes in at 87 minutes. I think this is the same cut as the 2004 Vipco version, which is said to have minor cuts. It says at the beginning that it's by Stone Vision Entertainment, another company I can't find any information on, and the BBFC website doesn't say anything about it, or this particular release. The DVD sleeve is actually not too bad. The description on the back has far too much detail about the first few scenes, reading almost like a novelised version of the film, and I think they went a bit comma crazy. But the spelling and information seems alright. The running time is close, claiming 90 minutes. The film runs for 87, so I can let it off for 3 minutes. The special features are nothing special. It has a trailer, which features a lot of gore and nudity. Quite a fun watch, but will ruin a lot of the best scenes of the film for people who haven't seen it. We also have something called Film Flash, which turns out to just be an advert for some Laurel and Hardy DVDs. Bit of a weird thing to include, but oh well. 
And of course, there is a director and actor's works, which in this day and age with the internet seems like a waste of time. My final thoughts on the film and the release as a whole is that it's pretty good. For a budget version of one of the most famous zombie films of all time, it, it does its job. Uh, there are other versions out there, such as uh, uncut Blu-rays, but if you see this for cheap, and you can get past the widescreen and the lacking special features, it's worth checking out. Uh, overall, I'd give this a recommendation.